Why is Luffy the only devil fruit user with drawbacks? Why? Like, I'm tired of it. Okay. okay. Let's see. Magellan with the Venom Fruit. He gets an overpowered ability that can one-shot Yonko. We've seen it. Well, he wasn't a Yonko then, but you get it. But he also has to spend most of his day scrolling on IG on the toilet. Now, let's be clear. This isn't necessarily mandatory. It's a craving he has due to his fruit, which destroys his stomach, but point still remains. Daifuku with the Puff Puff Fruit. He can basically summon a stand, a genie, that can fight for him or fight with you. But the drawback is annoying because you have to constantly rub yourself to keep it active. It never spends specified that it had to be a particular spot. So I suppose in Whole Cake Island with Reiju being there, it, it could be useful. But, but imagine fighting someone and you can't stop rubbing. What if you got eczema? It's extremely uncomfortable just to keep this genie active. Hey there, fellow pirates and pocket champs enthusiasts. It's your favorite captain, Braga, and I've got some exciting news for you all. Are you ready for the ultimate racing adventure on the Grand Line? Well, look no further than Pocket Champs. Pocket Champs is not only free to download on iOS and Android, but it offers you an exhilarating experience as you take the helm of your own champion. Coach your champ to unlock his potential by selecting the right training for the upcoming races. We all know in the world of One Piece, it's all about improving to be the best. Strategize to find the best racing strategy through world analysis and gadget selection. Just like the Grand Line, you need a plan to conquer the high seas. And here's the best part. Like any true trainer, trust your champ, lay back, and watch them race to victory. It's like having your own straw hat crew at your command. But that's not all. Pocket Champs offers so much more. Customize your ship, explore different islands, and challenge other players to epic races. Plus, you can collect unique One Piece characters and gadgets to give you the edge. But here is the treasure chest you've been waiting for. I have teamed up with Pocket Champs to offer you a starter pack with 500 gems and the exclusive White Wolf skin. Zora could appreciate that. But to claim your reward, simply click the link in my description or scan the QR code. These riches will automatically be added to your account on November 1st, 2023. But remember, this reward is worth $15 and is only available until October 31st. So you've got to act fast. So what are you waiting for, fellow adventurers? Join the race, hone your skills, and become the Pocket Champs champion you were born to be. Nico Robin's flower fruit. You can sprout body parts anywhere, which let's be honest, the buffs this fruit gives Nico Robin if she was your girlfriend, no drawback can negate. But it does have some infighting issues. She takes pain even on the sprouted parts of her body. So the more of you, the more parts to damage. That sounds a little crazy, but you get it. Blackbeard with the dark, dark fruit has the overpowered ability to take away devil fruit powers by touching you as well as absorbing pretty much anything into the void. The drawback is pretty significant, especially if you're in adult entertainment entertainment, but the user takes in twice the damage every time they're hit. Can you imagine Cracker having this fruit? I mean, Blackbeard may be from Tampa Bay as to why he can handle this. A few will get this reference, but it's pretty significant. Sugar, which some may say her powers isn't necessarily a drawback, but Oda kind of cheated with her by giving her several plot inducing powers and the most overpowered fruit in the story. She not only can turn you into a toy by touching you, but she can also erase your entire existence. I mean, why isn't this the fruit the world government was hunting Roger with when he was around? They should have used this right after after they stabbed him right after that declaration boom you're turned into a toy existence forgotten you're done that's it say goodbye but i suppose you can foresee the great pirate era being what it is but i'm sure they wished it could erase his existence kind of like they did with rocks now i'm thinking about it this fruit will be useful even now they like erasing people getting rid of entire countries like lucia just have someone use sugar's fruit and just erase everything and everyone and everyone will forget about it i do have a theory it's somewhat of a crack theory that sugar's fruit it would change based on the person that eats it topic for another day but for sugar's fruit this is a plus or a detriment based on if you like lolis or not because she doesn't age or physically she does not change which means even as an adult she still looks like a small girl and i'm sure to most she's treated like one so for six flags all those rides no go to luffy's drawback his limit to his devil fruit powers has it become annoying i found myself having those questions to after one piece chapter 1095 shouldn't luffy be past this point like oda what are we doing are we at the place now where oda needs to either make luffy strong without the limit or negate it altogether? I thought about it and now 
I say no, and I don't think it's going anywhere anytime soon. So where did this conversation come from? Because Luffy's Limit has always been a thing. So while I was doing research, right, I came across chapter 1003. And in that chapter, that's the fight on the rooftop where Luffy's pushing himself a bit too far, goes out of gear four, and Law, of course, being the straw hat that he is, explains Luffy's problem that his hockey is essentially gone for 10 minutes. Zoro then has to fight Kaido and do his right hand thing at the same time. But okay, after reading some of Wano again, Zoro was putting in work in Onigashima, man. Just Seriously. Either way, this led me to the comment section of my video on chapter 1003 from 2021 because I wanted to see if anyone was complaining about Luffy's drawback two years ago. I came across something even more cool, and it's a comment by The Exception, which talked about Luffy and how he kept pushing his fruit that his awakening would be coming soon. Little did he know, but that made me smile, man. Shout out to him. That led to speculation about his powers under that comment with user at Jember stating that he hopes Oda does something creative instead of turning everything around him to rubber. Uh, Oda kind of did both by Luffy being super creative, but also turning things to rubber. So I don't know. I did find a few comments talking about the drawback, which someone stated. I love how Oda took Luffy out of the fight as it gives others the opportunity because we don't get to see them fight often. They have the time to show their potential. Another user stated that they thought Luffy surpassed that limit after learning Rio and the flow and that they were disappointed that he still needs 10 minutes. The entire sentiment overall was positive and that Oda was providing others with opportunity. So this limit is built in, but is it really? How is Luffy's time limit normally handled? Well, let's go back. The first time we experience this limit is in chapter 786. Oda used this to somewhat provide more tension, and that's in quotes, because sometimes tension in One Piece can be fleeting. See, tension is meant to build drama and keep readers engaged. It's trying to provide layered reasons to keep you turning the page, or at least clicking through the pages, and it's done through multiple things, and Oda uses them throughout Dressrosa. Foreshadowing is one of them through Doflamingo and his motifs through Marineford, his existence in itself being a contradiction, and providing the hell in Dressrosa that he relished in the war. Also, inner conflict through the same character with his flashback and also using law to bridge the gap between the two using Corazon. But the one that stood out and is used quite a bit in stories in general, not just shonen or manga, the time limit. The time limit is how to create a tension 101 in stories. And Oda used this technique quite a bit, not just through Luffy. Let's, okay, Fishman Island. We have the Noah on a collision course with Fishman Island. Punk Hazard, the gas and trying to evade Smiley while also saving the kids before they die. Dressrosa, the lies in the birdcage. So this was somewhat spun using Jack, but same rule applies. And then going to save Sanji, there's a time limit involved there. Whole Cake Island, using the cake being cooked while evading Big Mom. Wano, using Onigashima falling on Wano. This is a very normal thing for Oda to use to build tension in a story where sometimes, let's be honest, it can be lacking. Which brings us back to Luffy's limit, and while I think tension, or some would say creating fake tension is the purpose, there's also the shown an element of expediting your MC while maintaining a level of consistency throughout the story. Now I know everyone hates power scaling, and that's not why they read One Piece, blah blah blah, but I think Oda has been very delicate with establishing levels and tiers throughout the story, and he's not as hung up on it as the readers, but it does matter to him. If it didn't matter, training arcs and several upgrades, using Wano as an example would not be important. He could just have them just win. But Oda cares about continuity in his story, and I think a great example of that was using Law and his overpowered shambles technique. Before this, most would just say, Oda doesn't care, Sugar can beat Kaido. And through this, Oda simply saying that they were too strong for a hacks move to be used on them. This is him establishing levels within the story and showing that continuity is important to him, as it should be for any author, except Hiromashima. And I love that guy, but... <laughs> Oda saying that his fans would be disappointed with Luffy defeating Kaido with just a punch shows that it is something on his mind. He then incorporated Ryo, advanced conquerors, advanced coding, split in disguise, and even Gear 5, all to show that Luffy has finally climbed to the pinnacle, albeit temporarily with this transformation. Now, I mentioned this prior with Oda and the shonen element of expediting your MC while maintaining continuity. This is just a thing in shonen, and we've seen it time and time and time again. You give the MC a power up, albeit again temporarily with a limit and consequences to maintain that tension in the story at that point and then throughout, whilst also giving your MC or another character the ability to compete with my guy in the gates. Insane power with devastating effects. I know he's not the MC, but he is in my heart. Okay, now what about Ichigo? Using the final Getsuka Tensho, which he then lost everything after that. Got it back, but that's besides the point. What about Gon and his power up using his potential to overcome Pito? But again, the loss of everything. But let's go back to Gear 5 though, because that's why we're here. Because even after getting there, he's still being held back. But let's think about it. Imagine if Luffy was able to beat all of these characters through normal means with no limits or no help, the problem you'd run into is every opponent Luffy faces after that would then have to be stronger than the previous one to make it interesting, which presents power cliffing and power creep. And those things are still present in One Piece, but they would be worse if these limits were not 
implemented. Like if Luffy could just use Gear Fourth with no drawbacks, the tension in future engagements lose their luster, and Oda does not have the out to give other characters moments like you see in Wano. If we don't know anything about Oda, one thing we should know is that he loves caveats, interruptions, and reasons to question things. These things make the story more interesting, and most things in One Piece are rarely ever cut and dry. Don't mention Admiral Yonko. Stop. Big Mom is defeated by Kid and Law. Oda doesn't really address if she's alive or not after the fact, but does she lose if she doesn't fall into the lava created by Law's awakening? Would Doflamingo had lost without Gamma Knife beforehand? Would Katakuri had lost without him stabbing himself and being implied as thorough, but then going to lunch after Luffy was presumably defeated? All this is meant to keep tension a part of the story while leveling up Luffy and having him overcome adversity while it's not being too strong. Now, with Gear 5, his limit is probably leading to a culmination of sorts. The limits involved in Luffy's gears is showing that growth is needed and that he still has a ways to go which is shown by the story where shanks has not met him yet so even while it's being awakened he still has to deal with these drawbacks and by the way they plague most devil fruit users law has drawbacks even with his awakening and that's been a stamina thing for law but ask yourself how far does luffy make it without these power-ups that provide these limitations gear second gear third gear fifth these insane boosts of power catapult him to a level that he isn't truly at yet and that's part of the problem because people judge him at these superior levels when he's getting boosted to them using the gears which other characters generally don't get this boost at all even with the awakening that's part of your power but the jump that luffy gets is not as catastrophic as other characters let's be honest but the thing with luffy in the story is that he will be strong enough when it's needed it's somewhat continuing the theme that oda set in motion with luffy's awakening the people needed something to believe in so nika appeared luffy needed to get stronger so he did it's really not that deep but it's in line with what one piece stands for people are going to hit it at times like the heart of the cards in Yu-Gi-Oh. You mean to tell me almost every time he needed a specific card, he got it? Well, yes, that's the story. Will Luffy ever get rid of these limits? Well, yes and no. Yes being the limits are only there to make the journey more difficult. If Luffy doesn't have a limit and he's fighting Kizaru, Oda has no place in justifying Luffy and Kizaru being down, even though Luffy just beat Kaido, who we know is stronger than Kizaru. But like everyone foresaw in the comment section of chapter 1003, this is providing opportunities. Now we have other characters engaging with Saturn. Who knows who's going to step up whilst Luffy is down? We have so many players involved and as much as I enjoy a gear fifth white star gun as the next person, Oda has an entire cast he has to utilize. This limit gives him a very convenient out and a way to showcase other characters again, like Zoro saving Luffy after his limit showed up or giving the country of Just Rosa a way to fight back themselves after Doflamingo ruined their country. It's actually a very great strategy if you don't see it coming. And for most that have been reading One Piece for a while, you start to understand the rhythm of these things and the need for intermissions and you may not like it and that's fine. You don't have to. But I think this is part of the reason why, in my opinion, Oda changes mind about Yamato joining the crew. Again, it's just speculation, but just imagine if Yamato were here, yet another character. I actually wonder how that would go. Also guys, don't forget to download Pocket Champs from the link in my description. Check out Pocket Champs today.